Yo, yo, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the for loop. Again, this is just like a third variation of loops. We've talked about the while loops, the do while loops, and now my personal favorite, the one near and dear to my heart, the for loop. This will probably enlighten your soul and make you much more excited to create loops because it's just so much clearer in my opinion. So let's go through and create a for loop and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about when you might wanna use which one. So. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. Again, I'm just going to comment this one out here so we can reference it and then we can have all three loops we can look at them and compare. All right, so the structure for a for loop, you say for, put the parentheses and then a body. Now the three pieces of the loop, the ones that I wrote down here, the initialization, condition and the update, you're going to put all of those inside of these parentheses separated by semicolons. So everything is in one spot. All of the loop functionality is defined right here. So initialization, we'll say in i equals zero. It's named i by convention, but you could name it whatever you like. And we'll say i less than 10, i plus plus. And then console.write line, the value of i. Dot net run, look at that. We get the same exact loop, but personally, I think it's so much easier to read what's going on. So I guess it depends on what you like. The while loop is very visual seeing what order things are happening in. You can see that the increment here is happening at the very end of the loop. For the for loop, that's not exactly clear just by looking at it, but that actually is what happens. So first things first, we initialize, then we compare, we check the condition, if it's true, we execute the body, and then we increment. If you're looking at it from top to bottom, it looks like this happens first, but this is actually going to happen right here. He here, oh goodness gracious, here. So once you understand how loops work, the for loop is nice. If you're new to loops, maybe it's a little bit confusing because you have to think about this being down here when it comes to the order of how things are executed. That's why the while loop is much better to learn the loop for the first time because it's nice and visual step by step. But once you got that down, putting it all up at the top is nice and clear. Now, I just talked about very simple loops, but you can do all kinds of different things. So for example, we could start at nine and we could go until i is greater than or equal to zero. And then instead of incrementing, we can decrement. And what this is going to do is actually going to count down from nine down to zero. Same number of iterations, just the value of i is different. So oftentimes we use these loops to iterate through something. So imagine we have some collection and we want to grab each item in that collection. So maybe it's an array or an array list. We can start at the beginning or we can start at the end. And just the, the what we wanna do is defined all up here. We could also skip values if instead of wanting to decrement like this, you could say i is equal to i minus two or whatever you want it to be. So just to see that, you could say i minus equals two. Now look at this, it counts down by two, nine, seven, five, three, one. So those are just some simple things you can do with loops. Hopefully you guys are excited to start using them in our programming, and I hope you guys got a pretty good understanding. Now, when would you wanna use which? I personally like to use while loops. If I have an indefinite loop, something I'm not entirely sure when it's going to stop, Sometimes these loops will have something called a sentinel value. So basically you could ask the user to put in some input and if they put negative one or a certain character, you can exit that loop. But you don't necessarily have a number of times. Right now we're, we're doing it 10 times, but if you wanted to do it indefinitely, you can change up that loop. And personally, I like the while loop best for that. Do while loops are good if you want to show something at least once and potentially more. And then for loops are usually good for iterating through something such as an array or some kind of collection similar to an array. This is really good when you know how many times you need to go through it and you can programmatically define that really easily up in this uh, section of the for loop. So hopefully that gives you a pretty basic but good understanding of the different loops that you should know to begin with. Thank you guys for watching and we're going to be talking about some cool stuff coming up so be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.